All right, we're live. Welcome, welcome. Oh. Podcasting, good people. This is Revolution Podcast. Live streaming. I'm here with Deanna Eisenman, the dream walker, the dream seer, the dream guide. It's just names I'm making up right now for her. Um, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a live podcast episode, but uh, if you guys are tuning in, you're digging it, be sure to go to her page, use tag tear and share this out, especially if anyone you know, or you especially, have ever wanted to learn about lucid dreaming, what it means, what it's used for, and some of the lore around that. Because I'm excited to get into and that. And if you feel like some of the conventional ways that you've been looking into dreaming just don't really resonate, mm. this, this is it. It's a great point. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs are feeling it, they're feeling it. So yeah, before, before we get started, um, I'd love to create a space and an intention are y'all this download? Y'all are not live yet. Um, we're live, but we're not. Yeah. On the Facebook Come on live. in, yeah. Oh, okay. We're live on Facebook. Oh, great. Yeah, just for like scheduling, because there's so much scheduling going on. <laughs> Is there anything going on in September if we're looking at our Idaho retreat? For you. And then I'll let y'all go. Just no, not until October okay. 13th. Okay. Cool. Just good. You mean these animals in here? Yeah. Sure. All right, have fun. Close the door. Sure. Thank you. Cool. So. I just want to take like three deep breaths and then speak an intention for this recording here. So I'm going to straight sparring. This first breath comes in. Out. Yeah, I want to speak for me, this recording, this conversation with you, um, to inspire wakefulness and lucidity in all aspects of life, in all realms we walk. Mm. How about you? I want to inspire people to dream more, to wake up in their dreams and realize how much power and how much creation happens in the dream world. To wake mm. up to that reality. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's rock and roll here. Which one? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. All right, we're looking good, we're sounding good. Mm -hmm. I love that you're doing these lives, too. I know, this is great. Let's get it out on all the channels. <laughs> We can't create enough. All right, three, two, one. Welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Kevin Arslan. It means why in Hungarian. This is the Revolution podcast. Just got done interviewing Daniel Eisenman once again, and now I'm joined by his queen, Deanna Eisenman. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. How are you feeling right now? Excited. Really excited. Nice. One of my favorite topics, so it always stirs up a lot of excitement for me. Yes, yes, <laughs> man, and I'm I'm just like I'm in awe of dreams themselves, and that's what we're gonna be talking a lot about today because I really want to get Deanna to share some of these next level perspectives that she's been sharing with me in her dream work. But before that, I thought you know just to walk down memory lane a little bit and provide some context because I don't know if the story's been told you know how I first encountered you and met you um, we definitely met and circumambulated in the retreat space transformational space because that's where Daniel I met him and then he invited me to International Tribe Design where I met you about two, over two years ago now it was wild time. Um, yeah what is time but I remember, um, first off, my business partner, dear brother, Ryan, shout out to Ryan Bodic. Um, he had talked so highly of you. Mm. He was like, oh, wait till you meet you. You're going to love Deanna. Like, she's super mystical. Like, she's just one of the most loving souls. Like, on and on and on. And so I was like, you, Ryan. <laughs> I know, yeah, Ryan, Ryan's like your biggest fan. And uh, so I already had like an, an idea about you. And I was like, okay, she sounds awesome. And like, I knew Dan was awesome. So I was like, well, she has to be awesome because they're partners. <laughs> Um, 
And then I remember like we hadn't really talked to the first night of the retreat, but the first morning, like you came up to me or like we were having coffee and like I just, I don't know, it was you or me, like in my memory now it's me, but it <laughs> might've been you. Started talking about our dreams, mm -hmm. like from the night before. And then like, it like, you know, sparked my interest because you know, many of you may not know this about me, but early in my journey, I was all in on Jungian psychology and like dream analysis. And so I, I used to like be the guy in my community house in Santa Cruz where like I would sit there with my like, you know, young symbol book, my dream dictionary. And I'm like, okay, okay. There was a swamp and a red cat. And I would just like go through and try to like decipher dreams. And so That's I used terrible. to like geek out about it, you know? And, and I remember you told me something really interesting because you were asking me about like animals and dreams. And you had told me that morning that you had a black and white horse that were running together that you'd been shown in a dream that was like super potent. And like, that was my, that was my first experience of you. And also my first like knowing that I was like, oh wow, she's like a straight up serious dreamer. Serious. Yeah. Um, so my path as a lucid dreamer actually started when I was very young. I was having a lot of nightmares. And one day my mom came and told me, you know, if the monster came, comes back, just turn around and ask what it wants. And so I did. And that was really my first encounter with lucid dreaming without really knowing that that was even a thing. And I don't even think my mom really grasps my, <laughs> the idea of lucid dreaming or why, but right. she knew and she passed that message along. And ever since then, like the dreams just continued. They never really stopped. We just don't remember them. But I was always so frustrated with the amount of details that I could remember and the dream world being so real to me. Like it was, I mean, I remember them like they're memories and sometimes I literally can't tell the difference between a dream and a memory. And so I was obsessed with trying to figure out what does this mean? Asking people, you know, I had this dream and like, how do I interpret them? And every time I would come about ways of interpreting my dreams, you know, the typical, there's a book on 1500 dream symbols <laughs> interpreted. I just felt like this is not it. Like there's something else. This is so wrong. And so I just, it, years of frustration and anger and back and forth. Um, I finally came about the Toltec way of dreaming, like they're in, the ancient Nahuatlism um, knowledge, and it has changed everything for me. When I found it, I read the book, The Toltec Secret, and I was like, this is it. Like, mm -hmm. this is everything I ever thought as a kid, but couldn't put into words. Like, this is why we dream. Like, I, it finally just made sense for me. And then it's just been, <laughs> you know, just the extreme roller coaster since then. But, wow. Yeah. Wow, the Toltecs, I mean, there, there seems to be some magic there because I think many people have been introduced to that through um, Don Miguel Ruiz and yeah. like the Four Agreements, the Fifth Agreement, a Toltec mystery tradition or, you know, yeah. style of philosophy. Um, that was definitely my first, you know, introduction. I just thought it was all about like, the Incans, Mayans, and Aztecs. There's actually Mazatecans, Toltecs, there's all these other civilizations that were there. And fun fact, I just saw this on online like yesterday i don't know if this is true someone can fact check this but there's there's only 35 discovered pyramids in egypt hmm. that are extant which means we can still mm -hmm. see them there's 1800 in central and south america Whoa. so anyone who doesn't think there's like a rich lore in the western hemisphere like these people were on some next level shit no matter how you okay. dice it like so apparently the temples um, relate to dreaming, so there's nine different levels of, of dreaming, and they all, like, the steps represent that. Like, oh, for wow. them, everything was about dreaming, and to them, dreaming um, was correlated with conscious dying. So if you master conscious dreaming, you can master conscious dying, and that's what it was about for them. And this is basically how you would end the cycle of reincarnation. <laughs> and, you know, we talked about this multiple times, I'm like, how do we end this cycle of reincarnation? It's not just about, you know learning xyz in this lifetime and then you know what we just come back and do it again like there's gotta be stuff like once again there's something else to it and when i heard this i was like that makes sense like it makes so much sense that yeah that's it well okay so let, let's go into this topic this is this is some really deep stuff i first heard about this in shamanism 
like plant medicine, shamanism, but what is conscious dying mean to you? Like what, if, like what does that mean? Like, uh, to me, that means the same way that you would wake up in a dream and have a lucid dream, you're able to do that when you die. So you wake up in that space where seemingly your body is passing out, but your consciousness can awaken. And you realize that your body, your soul has to leave this body and you can choose where to exit from. And depending on if you want to exit from your navel, your chest or your crown, you end up different places and you can choose what you do from there. So conscious dying is the same of waking up in that process in the darkness where you leave. Whoa, whoa. So, <laughs> I mean, this, let's just go straight for it. There's no reason to like go, no, to move away from this topic. There are so many rabbit holes though. So there's so many. Um, <laughs> This, this is this is what the first way I encountered this idea right and so this there's so many layers here and just for the the viewers listeners you know um, a lot of traditions talk about reincarnation like so many it's not just the Hindu samsaric wheel where it's like yeah you're gonna have a hundred and eighty thousand lifetimes before you can have even one lifetime where you like there's always like rules about lifetimes but this shows up in a lot of traditions. The Egyptians talk about this, the you know, Mayans, Aztecs, Toltecs. So what's going on here? You know, what, what what's going on here? Like, why is it that human beings and history itself seems to repeat and spiral and recapitulate? And like it's just like we enter different eras and like they're somewhat measurable. This is where like um, golden ages, dark ages come in, or the Bakhtuns, which are like these calendar periods in the Mayan calendar, which are really famous and got popularized by 2012. Anyway, spiral into the, some of the mystery traditions here. I first heard about this with uh, dimethyltryptamine, hmm. which is the active component in ayahuasca and a lot of these shamanistic tools. And a big part of that is like, oh yeah, this is practice for death. Because if you can die awake, you don't have to come back in and repeat as a soul the same way. Well, I haven't heard it in any other aspect other than the this whole type dream analogy, I guess, or philosophy. Right. So that's make that. I, mean, I imagine they're coming at this this problem from different angles, right? And, mm. and this is this is interesting too because I want to draw the parallel between like death and sleep, because <laughs> like in Greek mythology, like. There's like the god of death, and then his like little cousin is sleep. I think it's Nepenthe, or someone can check that. Like, sleep is like a practice for death, right? Because we're losing consciousness. And I think for a lot of people, um, sleep is just kind of like, oh, I just passed out. Or like, you know, I know this has been me a lot of my life. Like, I'm just like, oh, I'm just like so tired. Like, I'm just going to turn off. And I wake up the next day, just kind of like, but I mean, that's because a lot of the wisdom of the dream world has been lost. It, it, now you hear, um, you know, oh, it was just a dream. Like, thank God that was just a dream. <laughs> like, there's no such thing as just a dream. Like, what we create in the dream world, I mean, I, we're going to get deep. Let's do it. It's, the dream world is this parallel reality, in a sense, where I consider it the real world. Because once you dream something there, it happens here in this world. Maybe not literally, unless you have a very prophetic dream that's straightforward, but it's all symbolism, but it happens in this world. And so most people look at it from this Jungian perspective of, you know, oh, you know, swamp and red cat or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, that's in my psyche from when I was a kid and right. maybe it's surfacing in this, you know, I had an argument yesterday. But really this, <laughs> once you have that dream, it's gonna happen in the future. And so, most people when they when they watch something when they you know whatever it is they live throughout the day and complain about and um, watch on tv watch on social media that's what they're going to dream about and when they dream about it they relive it again and when they relive it again they're very likely to not let go of it and so you dream it and you live and you dream it and you like and that's how they trap themselves in this self-imposed prison and so if you want to change your life you have to change your dream and you know everything is hidden in our language just you know mm -hmm. the, the woman of my dreams my worst nightmare you know right, it's right. like we speak about it in those terms but why is that because it is the like in the dream is where you find it or you plant Whoa. it and so 
if you want to find the, the woman of your dreams, you have to literally find her in the dream first, and then she'll come in this world. And most people will hustle, hustle and grind and, you know, be freaking sedated from poor food choices and just overworking, that they just, they pass out. It's just blackness because that's when we sleep and rejuvenate, but most people are sabotaging everything they're creating while awake, while they sleep. Whoa. Whoa. Wow, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> it literally is in language, and this is, this is maybe the biggest takeaway for anyone um, that might start them on this journey. Like, it's in our language. Like, what's your big dream? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I, I dreamed of this moment. I dreamt of this business, this relationship. Like, it's exactly what you're saying. Like, the dream world is where everything's originating. It's not the other way around. It's not mm -hmm. like, well, I hustled a lot and then I dreamt <laughs> about having a million dollars. It's like, no, it's like, it's the other way, like yeah. the causation. And this is, this it, is what's mind blowing to me. It, it trips me out. And I think I try to, um, <laughs> convince myself that this, this is not how it works. Like multiple times. Cause like, that's just radical. Like, I mean, I look at my dream and I'm like, that's really radical. Like I, that, it, that just can't be, but then I have conversations with people. They tell me about their dreams. I'm like, okay, so based on that dream, did this and this and this then happen? And they're like, yeah, that happened shortly after that dream. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> and I, when I came across this information, um, or learned this knowledge, I was like, you know, it's one thing to sit and go through a class or workshop or whatever and just soak in information and be like yeah that kind of resonates like that's cool i can buy into that philosophy but for me i was actually able to go back in all of my like past dream journals and memories and be like okay i had that dream and then this happened i had this dream and that's when this happened and i was like oh my god <laughs> That's kind of scary. Yeah. Even, even like in our conversation the other day, I started to play back the big dreams I could remember this year and just laugh my ass off because <laughs> they happen for sure. And that, the, like the, the conscious mind, it was hard for me to understand like, oh, you know, how is going downstairs and seeing a woman be tortured and like all this stuff. And I was like, wait, that was a relationship. I was like, <laughs> or like I went through this, like swamps seem to show up a lot of my dreams, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, that was like a, that was a creative project that failed. And like, I can just in backwards looking, see where these dreams, which had a lot of emotional content and like deep stuff happening would later show up in my normal life, um, mm -hmm. acted out, which is, which is fascinating here. So let's, let, let's, let's rewind a bit. Cause I do want to, I want to like provide a foundation for someone listening to this yeah. where they could actually like go in and start this process. Cause mm -hmm. like even last night, like I, I was like so intent on like powering down, <laughs> having enough energy to dream, which is a key concept and becoming lucid or at least remembering with vividness my dreams. So in this, in this Toltec style, what you've been studying, like the first step, right. Is to even, remember because you, mm -hmm. you said we have eight dreams a night yeah yeah so i most people when they look at interpreting their dreams it's like oh i had a dream and my teeth fell out you know what did that mean and I'm like, that's sweet but there's like there's a whole other like sequence to that dream what happened before what happened after and most people just want to sit back and interpret their dreams but the whole point of the dream world is to wake up in the dream have enough energy to be lucid and then create the dream that you want. It's not just to sit back and say, oh, I had that dream. Okay, then what? Like right. you interpret the next and the next. That's not what it's about. Um, so that's something I find very important for people to realize, first of all. Um, and then, yeah, there's nine levels of dreaming. We all have eight dreams every night. And to remember your dreams, like first level of the dream pyramid is unconscious dreaming. Um, not remembering your dreams, basically. And step one and a half is remembering them. Wow. Step two is actually being lucid. So most people stay in those bottom two steps right. for a very long time. Uh, but you're saying, what can you do to remember them? Yeah, like just, just to start off, say like, maybe you remember dreams sometimes, but to like to start remembering them. Yeah. Um, the reason why most people don't remember their dreams is because they don't have enough energy. It requires enough energy to remember them. And then also to be lucid is the next level. And so, you know, for you, it might've been like one day of, you know, okay, I'm going to remember my dreams. Right. So I'm going to do all these things, but that's not really, you know, we, we need to really accumulate that energy. And so, God, 
so chill. <laughs> um, we have this energy that surrounds our navel and another energy around our head. It's called the tunnel and then the wall. And when we sleep, those switch places. And that's why you're observing the dream world the way that you are. Mm -hmm. And in, in order to be lucid, you need those to merge. And that's where you need to have enough energy. So if your energy only reaches reaches your heart, like that's where you start to remember them. Um, mm -hmm. And if the energy re reaches your third eye, that's when you're lucid. And then that the crown is like super lucidity, you get them to merge. And so, yeah, you, you need to not hustle and grind like as much as you do. You need to like live, <laughs> live life a little slower in a sense. Right. Um, the, in, you know, there's certain things, less drama, less conflict, less like all of these emotional things that really impact us to a degree where it becomes hard for us to even think about anything else because we're so in that like oh that's just like i hate right. my job i hate my life i hate my partner like all this stuff it's like it, it's draining and so making sure you have enough energy i don't know if that looks like getting an energy clearing from someone or meditating more for one thing um and then start dream journaling and that's really the one thing that I think is the easiest to do in order to start remembering your, your dreams. Mm -hmm. And some people might say, well, I don't remember anything. Like, what do I do? Well, just start by writing down the feeling, like holding the in intention. Most, most times people don't remember because they also, they don't necessarily want to or they never thought of even remembering them. So if you start by holding the intention that I want to start dream journaling and I want to start remembering them. It's going to take you three days and you'll, you'll start getting glimpses and then you'll get more and more and more. Yeah. This is, this is really good advice. Um, for anyone that just wants to start this journey is just like wake up and, and like just notice how you feel, what you're thinking and then go from there. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, I know cause when we were talking the other day, I, I used to keep like a religious dream journal. Like I would write like for an hour every morning and like, the more I wrote, the more would come out. And I was just like, oh my that, goodness. That's what made me stop. Because I got right. so frustrated with that. I was like, I don't have time for There's this. So I don't much. even know what to do with it. Right, right. <laughs> Write a book, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cool now because I can go back and see these themes and where, what, what I was creating. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, like if you don't want to spend an hour and a half every morning writing, you get better about like pulling out the really important stuff. The yeah, sequence of events, what to feel. And right. what to look for, then you don't have to write all the little details that don't really matter that much. Right. So something else that's interesting about this idea that like the energy around the head and energy around the navel switch at night. So we have to like cultivate navel energy to have the mm -hmm. energy to remember and become lucid in dreams. Like that to me, like it begs a few questions. One is, you know, Western society, if you're in the matrix, is very like head based and neglects the navel center. And it's like so like drama, emotional vampirism, go, 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 hustle, grind, plan, execute. And then like, um, I feel like a lot of Eastern society is a little more navel based, right? Where it's like, have hara, have center, have dantian and like mm -hmm. focus. And like, you know, there's everything in between. So I think that's funny that they switch. And then, you know, for many of us and for me and the parts of my life where I was not treating myself well and hustling. Yeah. Like sleep was just like unconsciousness. Like just let me please pass out and feel better. Yeah. But then also for a lot, like, like I said, what you dream happens here. And it's every time I say it, I'm like, really? Is that really how it works? But it is, um, for, you know, for all of us, you've probably experienced waking up after a nightmare and like sometimes it's just hard to get the day straight because there's this lingering emotion of this like, oh, like what the hell was that? And then you can wake up after, after an amazing dream and just be on fire. Right. And so it has both a, a you know, physical and mental impact on us. And that's another reason why it's so important to understand this world because you want to minimize the ones that are creating all the conflict and drama in your life and then be able to plant the dreams that you do want. And if you're not consciously creating them, then at least have the knowledge to be able to cancel a dream. So 
it's, it's just so important. Like this whole idea of it's just a dream drives me crazy. Like if people have a dream of, you know, a good dream about something, it's like, oh, that was awesome. You know, maybe they'll take it as something prophetic or something that's like, maybe this will happen. And if it's a nightmare or something else, then, oh, that was just a dream. But then if some like an accident happens before a trip, it's like, oh, maybe that's a warning. So it's like people will just pick and right. choose like, oh, that maybe this is something and eh, you don't really want to pay it too much attention because it takes dedication, time and dedication to be a dreamer, like a lot. And maybe that's too much for a lot of people to add on to their already full on hustling life. Right, right. Which is sad because you could actually do a lot less while awake and just do all the things that you want <laughs> while you're sleeping, just kick back and be like, yeah, cool. Right, right. I mean, this, this is it's worth saying uh, two really powerful men, James Cameron and Christopher Nolan, who are film directors. Um, James Cameron directed Avatar, mm. so which is mm -hmm. a great film designed to show you lucid dreaming. He's an avid lucid dreamer. Wow. That this is a story. So like he he created that whole movie and like a lot of his visions for being a director and a filmmaker in the dream world first. So he understands yeah. this. Yeah. Inception, Christopher Nolan did the same thing. Avid lucid dreamer. Wow. He reports a lot of his film ideas from... So I, I feel like people in Hollywood, although some of them might be doing black magic, <laughs> are already doing this. I feel like great people out there, that are artists especially, or creatives, are already doing this. Yeah. But you're, but you're saying like anyone can use this to create their reality. And this is an important point, um, which is why I'm like, I'm re-inspired and rededicated to get back in touch with my dreams. Like, I feel like I've kind of lost touch because I've been focused on uh, hustle this <laughs> reality. And uh, yeah, less is, less is more actually. Oh yeah, so much more. And I've just, I've, I've seen it over and over for myself. Like I'll have a specific dream and then something happens within a couple of days and I'm like, you know, for me especially, uh, creativity. You want to dream of monkeys. <laughs> Monkeys. And I, I had a dream of like 15 giant gorillas coming to me. I woke up in the middle of the night. I wrote down the program for my retreat that I'm hosting next year. Mm. Uh, I wrote down the itinerary, like everything. I called my friend the next day. I was like, we're doing this. Sold out within a month. Like the creativity was just flowing. Wow. And I've never felt that level of creativity before. And then I didn't even put those two together at that time. But then I was like, wait a minute, that was like, I had that dream with the monkeys. And I was like, that is insane. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's talk about lucidity. Yeah. Let's talk about lucid dreaming and waking up in the dream, becoming conscious of the dream. You know, this is a hot topic. And again, how, how a, a whole spiral, again, Ryan comes into the story at this point mm -hmm. because we became friends and he introduced me to a lot of the scene I'm in now, and we kind of went on this journey together um, because of Waking Life, which is another one of my favorite films, all about lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a house party in Santa Cruz in my unconscious days, and uh, right as I was starting to awaken, and he was talking about this, and I zeroed in because it was my favorite films. And so, lucid, and he was an avid lucid dreamer um, in the old school way, right? And I, I for years tried and then gave up of doing reality checks. Yeah. So this is like one of the ways to become lucid in a dream is you do reality checks in the waking world. So it goes into your subconscious and you do it in the dream world. And the ones I was always doing is like counting my fingers because in the dream world, it won't be easy to count my fingers or try to like put my hand through my own hand, you know, like, like the hologram, checking light switches, checking doorknobs, trying to look at clocks or text to mm -hmm. see if they're shifting. But you have a different perspective on this. Yeah, for me, those just don't really work. I mean, lucid dreaming has, has come somewhat natural for me since I was a kid. But um, yeah, for one thing, having enough energy. And so for me also, the dream world, sometimes we can get stuck in lucidity. It's like um, there's lucidity and super lucidity. And so if you're just lucid, you might be able to you know, wake up and realize that you're dreaming. It's like, oh my God, this is a dream. But I, you've never had a lucid dream? Before? I have, I have. I wouldn't say I've had a super lucid dream. Okay, so for some, it's like they get to the stage of the state of being lucid. Like, okay, this is a dream. And then they wake up real, fairly soon after that. 
But for a lot of people too, and I encountered this for a time, I wasn't able to create. So if you're really like super lucid in a dream, you can, you know, create the Eiffel Tower, you can make things like shape shift and appear out of no nothing. And sometimes we can get stuck and not being able to create. And that's where, you know, if you're trying to put your hand through your own, maybe that won't work because you're still in your conscious mind right. in a sense and your conscious mind knows that's not possible so that won't happen and so for me I, I got stuck a little bit in a world where the dream world was so real that like i couldn't find a glitch so some when i hit that pre-lucid state i'm like is this a dream i just look for the glitch and sometimes i can look up into the sky and i'll have kind of like you know the computer glitch kind of colors going on. I'm like, okay, there's a the dream. But everything started looking so exactly the same. Everything was feeling the same. Everything was looking the same. My fingerprint, I would like grab things to like, I'm like, is this like, I'm like studying everything down to the smallest detail. And so I was kind of trapped because some of the things I want to do in the dream world, you don't want to do while you're awake. Right. And so that's actually another thing. Um, I think a lot of people that are lucid dreamers, I know, including Ryan, <laughs> they will just do things that they want to do in this world. Right. Like and, fly, have yeah, sex. Fly, fly and have sex. Those are the, the two big ones. Big ones yeah. And this, that's all great. That doesn't really cause any harm. Uh, sex is actually one of the greatest forces that you can use in the dream world. You would manifest at the point of orgasm in the dream. So oh. if you become super lucid, it doesn't matter if it's an orgy, it's you're having dogs do it, or you're, it's yourself that's <laughs> in it, whatever it is, at the point of orgasm for whoever is in the dream, that's where you want to manifest the thing that you want. Oh. Really powerful creation tool. Um, and flying is great too, but you know, someone was telling me one day she, she had a lucid dream and she was wanting to heal this relationship, you know, create a bonfire at the beach. Um, to, you know, which ceremony, whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 you had fire, you had water, you had like all the wrong elements. You did not fix this relationship. You just made it end like hard. Oh. And so, yeah, you don't want to do the same things that you would do while awake in the dream world. And I think that's why some people just don't, they just don't get it. They think, oh, I'm lucid. And so, you know, we'll just do whatever in the dream world. Um, but something that I do to become lucid is definitely, once again, hold my attention. I find that a lot of people, after they talk to me or just have some sort of interaction with me, they come back a couple of days later and said they had a lucid dream. And so somehow I'm this like dream catalyst for people. Mm. And um, so that's one way that's just <laughs> coming out. Yeah. Well, I mean... I know you're human design, I know you're a projector, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, which by the way, projectors are supposed to be teachers, so mm -hmm. you're really good at like creating context and like um, distributing information and like kind of magnifying it. So there's definitely something there with the dreams. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, something <laughs> else that has, that um, has triggered my lucid dreaming more so was understanding all the symbolism because it's so different from this world. And then when I start to think of it in that way, I remember that in my dream. So like two nights ago, I had a dream with a person having red eyes and at first it freaked me out. And then there's another person with red eyes and I was like, oh, red eyes, that means like, that means it's like their true spirit, like their essence coming to you in the dream. And then that's how I woke myself up. And like, don't go downstairs was another one. When I first learned that, I was like, cool, don't go, go downstairs. And so in the dream, I, <laughs> Whenever I walk downstairs, take a few steps down, it's like, oh, wait, don't go downstairs. And mm. I would just back up. And so, like, understanding these little symbols is what's made me able to lose a dream even more. Just because so the funny. reality check doesn't work for me. Right, right. Well, this is, this is so trippy because this is the Matrix. <laughs> like, you know in the Matrix where they see, like, the, they see the black cat and it, like, deja vus? Like, he sees the same one. It's like, what was that? It's like, it's a glitch. They changed something. It's like... This is actual reality, like reality checks and glitches in the matrix. And you said like one way you see glitches is like looking up at the sky and seeing kind of like, you know, the computerized digital That helped feel. for a while, not anymore. <laughs> so now when you're in a dream and you're looking through the environment, like what are the other glitches you can find? 
Well, that's what I've had a struggle with uh, finding. Everything seems so real. But for some, you know, you want a, a dream journal for at least 20 days in a row. And then you will start to see a pattern of something that shows up that doesn't show up in your normal waking life. Mm. And that will become your, your mm -hmm. dream sign. And so once you've found that, you want you start programming yourself to when I for Dan it's like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <You> should, <laughs> it's like when I see Snoop Dogg, I know I'm dreaming. And you start repeating that to yourself, and especially before going to bed, because that's when you're most susceptible to any kind of programming. And so you would tell yourself that, mm -hmm. get it into your subconscious, and then in the dream, you know, when you see Snoop Dogg or whoever it is that you might see or what it is, but it's usually something that doesn't right show up. Right about Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting a good scratch. It's usually something that doesn't show up in right. this wallet. So that's that's another. It's so interesting. Like, I, I also like Plato's idea of a totem, which is the scene in Inception, and like that's something I really want to. I, I want to like create because I remember I used to play around with this idea. I just never stuck with one. And a totem is like something like you have in this world and in the dream world, and it, and it doesn't change in a certain way, so there's a way to tell But you would need dream. that to follow you. Like, it would right. need to be a, really be a part of you. You would have to put so much intention and energy into it that you bring it with you in the dream world, because otherwise right. you show up without it in the dream world. Um, but I played around with that for a bit, and I had a, a serpent ring that I lost, and I was you know, programming myself to make it my thing because I felt like if I look at the serpent in the dream, I know it's not going to be like this. But I never got to that point of consciously yeah. actually seeing it. So interesting. Yeah, but okay. I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next level here, logically in the dream work, and this is this is fascinating because it sounds like the stuff you've been training in and studying is just so fucking next level. But let's say let's say you remember your dreams, you start to become lucid. You talked about creating in the dream world first manifests in this world. And then if something that you don't want is happening in the dream world, you need to cancel it so it doesn't manifest. Let's talk about that. Like what, what does that process start to look like? It sounds like you've just started to play with that. Yeah, well, to cancel is the easy one to tell you. The other one, or someone's going to ask to book a one-on-one -on -one session if they want to get into that. Um, to cancel it, you have to imagine that part of it. But the thing is, I don't want people to just go ahead and start canceling their dreams that they think are bad. Because oftentimes, the dreams that they think are bad are actually the best dreams. So dreams of people dying, you know, means that it's not that person dying. It's an aspect of you or a struggle or a conflict. Something that you want to die is dying. Right. And so most people wake up, no, my mother died, and it's horrible, right. I can't cancel. It's because their conscious mind's like assuming it actually happened. Exactly. And so you don't want to go ahead and just cancel all of the dreams that you think are bad. You know, it's the same with um, people who are scared of spiders or s snakes or, you know, serpents are scary, but they actually heal you in the dream. And so there's just a lot of misconceptions, I guess. But, if you want to cancel a dream that's actually bad, you have to. It's basically like ancient NLP and shadow work and whatnot. Like, these people just knew this shit. Oh, yeah. But you imagine that image, like, as clear of an image as you can get from the dream, and you imagine it burning. There's the different kinds of fire, but the young fire is the one that destroys. And so you would want to ask that fire to destroy this image, like, you can see everything burning, like, as graphic and crazy as you can get. And then you pull it down through your blood and your bones, and down through your feet, tap on the ground twice, and you ask Mother Earth to take this dream and to do something beautiful with it. And it's like, it gives me chills when I do it. Like, and I can tell if I'm just trying to like, you know, just fire, burn, whatever, out. You, know, you actually have to pull it through your blood and your bones because that's where, first you bring it back to life, and then you um, take the life out of it. Like your bones is where the memories of your ancestors and um, live. And so you want to get it out. Right. And then out through your, you tap on the ground. So you, if you Watch. had a dream that was actually negative or creating something you didn't want to create, you would do this mm -hmm. that day when you woke up? Well, or within, you know, a couple of days. It depends on how fast they happen. I have some dreams that happen within three days. Um, most of my dreams actually do. And so, yeah, for me, <laughs> I try to do it by the end of the day at least when I have a moment off on life and everything. Right. Um, yeah. 
but as soon as possible, while you still have somewhat of a fresh, fresh memory. If you can do it right in the morning when you wake up, great. But you know, right. if not, it's not the end of the world if you're doing it later. So canceling, that's, that's a whole nother level. And then something else you mentioned yesterday that blew my mind that you hadn't talked about before is eating dreams. Yeah, that's, that's another. Yeah, that's one of the things you can do for, to gain energy. And it's apparently what the real skilled dreamers would do, um, or Therians, whatever, because if you can eat the energy of the dream, like that's the energy of creation, basically, then you could go on very little sleep and not need food. That's what I, you know, I haven't tried right. myself, right. but I saw my teacher one day come back after he was looking really sick one day that, yeah, weird stuff, long story. And then that next day, because he had just taught us this, and sometimes, you know, there's so much material that he's like, I just do the things that I'm better at than others. And he's like, maybe I'll do that next time I'm lucid. And he actually, he came back the next day and I was like, who the hell is this person? Like, he was completely just rejuvenated. And he's like, yeah, I ate my dream last night. Wow. Whatever you did is working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, so, is, this is wild stuff. Uh, yeah, it's insane. I mean, I would love to get that would help with mom life so much. <laughs> but the the thing that maybe that so few people pay attention to that's like really important is the, is the direction of which you move in the room, okay. which I've never yeah. never thought about. Most people just think, oh, you know, then I met this person, and we went here, and I was like, yeah, you went there, but which way did you take a right turn? Did you take a left turn? Did you go straight? Did you go like, how did you get there? So this is good. Like, what do the directions signify? So the left... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's just feeling it right now. <laughs> All the feels. So going to the left is... Uh, means that whatever path you're on will be more difficult. It'll be a struggle. Um, kind of like the way of the warrior. So you'll get to your desired destination, perhaps, but it will be you know, through some sort of death, maybe you'll like lose a job or lose a partner or like you'll lose something and then gain the wisdom after, but it will be that struggle of getting there. And if, if you go to the right, it's the side of the blessing and the light, um, the path of least resistance, like this will be easy. So you always want to go to the right and north. If someone disappears north, like straight ahead, something is going to end or come to an end and that's if they disappear in that direction but it's north is also the land of the ancestors the land of the dead so if your ancestors are visiting you they would also appear from the north with red eyes that's it yeah that's if there is if it's truly them um people are like oh this person was with me but if they don't have red eyes it's just a mind projection right. of them unless you are in touch with unless you're actually in touch with like prophetic dreams to another level, then I guess then it works a little differently. Um, but most people are not there. So yes. And going downstairs, it doesn't matter if you're going downstairs, you're going down elevator, you're going down a ski, ski slope or water slide. The movement of going down is down into your underworld, which I guess we would call our subconscious here where disruptive repetitive patterns live. So whatever you're doing down there is not necessarily in your favor. And those are the ones that you want to cancel. <laughs> oh my God. It's, I've had so many vivid dreams going down stairs <laughs> and basements and like dungeons. Yep. And it's just like, oh, you're in our cave just exploring, <laughs> but the thing is we bring life to it. So it is never go downstairs. So if possible, we want to always go to the right. If we, if we have a choice. Yeah, if you have a choice. But then if you're lucid, you wouldn't just focus on going to the right. You would call in the animals that represent whatever it is you're trying to create or whatever it is you're trying to heal. You know, so but just know that for the sake of unconscious dreaming perhaps and which ones to cancel, the ones going to the left or going down is ones that you would cancel. Yeah, so to so the left and down, not so good. Mm -hmm. To the north ending something or the ancestors speaking. To the right is the the path of blessing. Yeah, and up is always good. That's going to the heavens. So yeah, up and to the right, mm -hmm. down and to the left. I mean, this is righty tidy, lefty loosey. This is somewhat mirrored in this world. <laughs> yeah. um, well, the animals, this is really powerful. You mentioned monkeys and creativity and snakes and healing. Mm -hmm. I know spider is another one too. That's important. Yeah, there is so, I think it's the fifth or sixth level of dreams is where the spider lives. 
And the spire is the one that gives you favors. So if you can get to that level, you have, you have to get on. <laughs> There's a few steps. Um, you just go and you plant something in the web of the spider, and then you get it. Wow. Spider's kind of like the internet broker of the dream yeah, world. Yeah, the web of, of the dream world. Wow. Exactly. And so snakes actually aren't negative. They're no. healing or transformation. Always good. Always good. I've definitely yeah. had so many dreams about snakes. Some really wild dreams about snakes. One of them was actually popping in really vividly. It was like, uh, I was at sea with my buddy who was a sailor. This is an old, very vivid dream I paid for pages. <laughs> Arise part of this podcast too. It's this beautiful dragon eye pit bull in the room, scratching herself. Um, I have a little snake in my pocket and like I, someone asked me to pull it out and it like turned into a giant sea serpent and destroyed the boat. But like, it, it was like friendly to me. It just was like super powerful. Wow. And I just always remember being like, what? What is happening? Because I thought it was like dangerous, but it was like a powerful healing dream. Yeah, wisdom and healing. And um, there was one time I, I remember a friend had asked me, you know, what serpents mean. And this was before I even, you know, knew all of this. And I was just like, I don't know, you know, serpents. You know, you know people come to me, but I, you know, whatever. Google search dream symbols and whatever. And um, she basically had a dream that this snake was like sneak. She was laying on the beach. And this snake was sneaking up on her neck, like on the left side. And then she woke up because she was so fucking terrified and couldn't go back to sleep for another four hours. And then after then learning all of this, I got back to her and I was like, didn't you, like when you had that dream, like I remember you had hurt your neck, like which side of your neck was hurting? She was like, the left side. I was like, yeah, the serpent was coming on your left side, trying to heal you. And if she, so in the dream, had she let that, a uh, serpent perhaps bite her on the neck where it was hurting, she could have w woken up healed. Wow. Like that's how it works. Like the dream world is so correlated and for guys, like the clearest example is obviously a wet dream. You know, right. your body reacts to what you dream. Like, right. You don't have to do shit. You're just right. like, whoa, wet dream. And so that's how it works. Like it has an impact on our body, what we experience when we sleep, regardless if we think so or not, good or bad. Yeah, the, the heretic in me wants to speak this into reality because I went all the way through it. The scientific view, the rational materialist view, you know, says that dreams are just like, they have no meaning and they're just collections of leftover thoughts and obey residue and things like that. Like, you know, do the experiment for yourself is what I'll say. Because I, I remember even, you know, even my little brother and, and people I talked to about this stuff, and you know, I'm, I'm a novice, like I, I've barely become lucid and not, I always become lucid through circumstance. I haven't been able to trigger it, but I, I can tell the power of dreams because I've been aware of them for years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyone who thinks that this is just like complete woo woo, like yeah. here's an interesting perspective. We spend one third of our lives asleep having eight dreams a night, according to this. And I think that should tell you that this is very worth our time. It's a lot I mean, of our life. A third of our life, yeah. And, and I mean, to think that dreams are just this, you know, residue, reliving what you did, what your mind didn't process the day before. I mean, that just seems absurd to me. And that's why I never, I never agreed with all the people that teach dreaming and like all this dream analysis and dream philosophy. I was like, no, it's not just residue it's not like there's more to it than just a random dolphin shows up because i saw a dolphin yesterday like that's not what i, I just couldn't it just didn't sit right with me it's like that's not why we dream like there's gotta be that's like i, <laughs> I remember i was i was fascinated by dreams as an undergrad i was studying to be you know, a psychology professor and i want to do my phd and i remember the moment and this is like before i even understood intuition where I was like so excited. I was like, all right, we're gonna go into Freud and Young. Like, they're gonna get into dreams. And I know there's something here. Maybe these professors who have the knowledge will tell me. And I remember they just like, they did all this stuff, you know, in the, in the class. We're going through all these topics. And they got to dreams. And it's like, the professor was just like, yeah, you know, dreams, they had some cool ideas, but this stuff's just residue. It's not important. On to the studies. They just like bypassed it. And it, I was like, I was shocked. I was like, and just like, there's something in me that called like this, my spirit in me, just like <laughs> bullshit. And like, I was like, okay. And I, I felt the same way in biology when they were like, you know, so I was getting really into evolutionary biology and they're like, 
It's like, yeah, the DNA code, it's very powerful. Well, all DNA does is code for protein. And by the way, 60% of it's junk DNA. It's actually meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. I'm like, this is, this is comical. Yeah, it is. This is it's like saying that whoever created this was like, you yeah, know, let's just create like a, a prefabricated TV show and they can watch that when they sleep in case they're bored. Like what? Oh yeah. That's just, yeah. Man, that's just nuts to me. That's intuitively, obviously false. Yeah. Um, unless you, you haven't done the inquiry yourself. That's what it comes back to. Yeah. And like I said, a part of me keeps wanting to think that this is not right. Like this has got to be like, what? But I, I can go back and like when people tell me about these things, I'm like, somehow it works this way. And I, I don't know who figured out that right and left matters in the dream world, but it does a lot. And I see it play out in my own life, I see it play out for others. And it's just, yeah, I mean, if people want to think it's just woo-woo and fun, great, keep sleeping in the darkness, you know. But wow. for people that want to wake up, there is a whole life to gain here. Like, right. literally, because you can create it here. And if you're not, if you're not creating the things that you want, then, then you might want to be able to be conscious in your dreams to look at why are you not creating it? Because we inherit, um, inherit ancestral ways of dreaming as well. So whatever your ancestors have lived, Mm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we get that too. That's why you see wow. family patterns like um, resurfacing. You know, you, you're, maybe your brother is going through the same alcoholism as your uncle did or whatever. Right. Your grandfather is because, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah this, this is actually pretty profound. And this is a thesis I'm going to incorporate into my life. It's like this like hustle and grind and like I'm going to make money and like... <laughs> get love and like you know this like western mindset of like do it all and then just like if you still have energy at the end of the day you didn't grind hard enough <laughs> this is like exactly yeah. the opposite because if you hustle so hard and then you have no energy and at night your dreams because they're unconscious are uncreating and just like blocking everything you're doing in the waking world yeah. and then we wonder why so many people are stuck in these loops i know like this is this I is mean, pretty wild you can skip the hours of you know, meditating and visualizing and vision boards and, you know, affirmations and whatnot. It's just like bypass that. All you need is one dream. Granted, it can take a lot to get to that one dream. But once you have that down, it's one dream for everything that you're wanting to create. Like, once you get it, you get it. And then you, you plant it. You don't have to, okay, well, I'm, you know, working with addiction. I got to, you know, work with the shadow side and the inner child that was neglected and the whatever it might be that comes up and you can you can essentially completely bypass that wow. i'm not saying that that doesn't work and it's not beneficial but you can do that but if you keep having dreams of you know ra rabbits are the spirit of addiction um mm -hmm. then because the rabbit is like takes over takes control and so you don't have control because the rabbit takes control if you keep having dreams of of that then you can spend as many hours as you want uh, trying to fix it in this world. It's, you're, it's not going to happen. Yeah, there's something really wild here that I'm feeling about, like, code. Like, this is like a, like, source code in the, in the back, like, the methods, objects. Like, I only took one year of computer science, but, like, <laughs> the actual code where you go in and you're, like, in JavaScript or, or, or mm -hmm. you know, C++ and then there's like the software so like re waking reality is kind of like we're running the program and it's like ah oh, like my life.exe it's so yeah. epic but meanwhile every night you're coding the source code so exactly. it's like if you just try to change the front program like it doesn't matter because exactly. your unconscious is changing the source code whoa yeah that was a really good analogy and wow yeah I, I'm, I'm realizing this moment and again you know Nolan James Cameron these guys are inspiration for me because it, it, this, this isn't like out of this world to think that if you have big aspirations, big dreams, you want to make big impacts in the world, which I most certainly do. Like mm -hmm. I need to be looking into the dream world a lot more and I'm, I'm actually excited of, to get back into it. Um, a lot of important people know this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's move towards some closure here. Um, well, first off, um, Maybe on a more personal note, what, what are you most excited to dream? 
Mm. And then your life. Like, tell me about that. I don't know if it's excited to dream. Um, more creativity for myself. Like, I love that. Like, that feeling of that type of creativity that I had after waking up from that dream was profound. Like, I think creativity one of the, is one of the greatest drugs out there. It, it felt like being on a drug. I was like, this, I don't know. Like, I know where it's coming from, right. but it is insane. And so for me, living from that place is like such a, like a constant state of flow and creation. And so that, I'm like, I was so inspired by. And then, you know, you've worked on getting a new job, healing any relationships that I want to heal, um, ancestral patterns, like that, that I'm really excited about, like really going in and clearing ancestral drama and negative history, like that. I'm just, I'm ready to end that fully. Right, right. And so, yeah, it's always so ever-changing, you know, depending on what, um, what is going on in my life. It's, it's ever-changing. But getting to a state, I think, also of being able to uh, consciously dream like for other people and go in and assist people in the dream world through the dreams. That's something I'm excited to be able to do. Mm. Not I'm not at that level, but I can guide people in the in their dreams. Apparently. Well, sometimes actually I do have dreams on behalf of other people, but that's another another level. Wow, wow. So yeah, like tell us more about you know what you do one on one. Like what is what is Deanna offering and how can people get in touch with you or like start this journey? Well at moonandmagic.com. Oh, that's a good name. Yeah, the moon because the moon is the one that gives you favors in the dream world as well. Mm. And then we can never have enough magic in our life, can we? No. Um, so yeah, depending on whether it's like conscious living, just wanting to look at it from a more like waking reality of getting you know, they obviously go hand in hand, but one is not separated from the other, but you can look at them separately still. So maybe if someone wants to just look at their dreams, like how can I start really understanding my dreams? Um, how can I work with them? How can I influence them um, and change, you know, change the ones they don't want to happen and, and plant the ones that they do want? That's something that I can help with. And then at the same time, looking at like where are you sabotaging yourself in the waking life? Because, because what you do while you're awake also impacts how you sleep. And so both both worlds are equally as important. So moonymagic.com, mm -hmm. Deanna, Eisenman, she's tagged here. If you're watching from the Facebook channel, um, we'll have everything linked up in the podcast. And tell us about this retreat. I'm excited to hear about that. Oh, uh, well, this is going to go deep about, into um, the dream world. So teaching people all of these things so they have the tools and the symbols to actually go home and practice this. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of it is tapping into your extrasensory mm -hmm. abilities. So because once you get in touch with that, which I really find is the core, like the, at the core of our mm -hmm. essence, our being, this is what we're able to, you know, your intuition, your gut feeling. So many people have been, you know, so far removed from that. They, they don't even hear their intuition anymore. <laughs> They don't, they're not in touch with that. And so the other side is bringing people like back in touch with that. And so I'm doing it in co collaboration with one of my first teachers who taught me about clairvoyance and telepathic communication, especially with animals. And this is like a mind bending experience, very hands on. Um, my first time when I did it, I, I, we would like disturb you, you would pick a picture from a pile of um, animals. Someone brought a picture of their pet. No one really knows them. Anyways, I picked a picture of a cat and I got to sit with this and really had to bypass my left brain because everything was right. like, this is wrong. I don't want to look like a fool. Like, where's this coming right, from? Right. But regardless, I picked it up and instantly what I just saw was a cat laying in the window and it was looking at this like one big tree out in the yard with little birds underneath, like in the grass. And I was like, what it, like, it came so clear so fast, and I was like, that's not, I don't know what this is. Like, who only has one tree in their yard? Like, first of all, this is right. not real. But anyway, sure enough, all this cat does was lay in the window, look at this one tree they ha had out in the yard, and observe the birds underneath it. And so this is something that people will get to try, like, first hands. It's not just a bunch of theory. Like, it's going to be tapping into these things. And we're actually thinking about doing an intensive um, at the end of next year to like for people that really want to become a clairvoyant um, and do wow. house clearings and stuff like this. So whether it's to make it a business or just have the tools because 
for myself. You know, I, I travel a lot. It's handy to have this information and knowledge because there's a lot of funky stuff going on in a lot of places. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an intensive and like learning this like full on um, is something that if you're interested in. Then, just, I mean, you know. There you have it. Wow. So we've been, we've been all over the place. The dream world may be the source code of this reality and it's more important what happens there in some ways. Mm -hmm. And it's a profound realm of healing, of insight and creativity. And it's worth your time. It's worth spending time in the dream world. If you take nothing else away from that, um, that idea and this, this broadcast, that's what I would intend and hope for you. Mm -hmm. And wow. So much knowledge to get. Yeah, I'm, I actually used to have a lot of uh, dreams about you for for a time being. Really, here. it was past life related. Like every time in my dream, it was so clear. Like we had some sort of past life history. I haven't really dove into Whoa. what that was, but I'll be curious next time I get a reading somewhere. My girl's like, "So this guy Kevin, like, what's the what's the story?" <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, fam. Dan and I have been podcasting <laughs> multiple lives deep, and we were still at it here in uh, 2018 and. Dawn of the New Golden Age. Mm -hmm. Diana, thank you so much. It's been a it's been a pleasure. I love this stuff. You're all okay. Me too. It's mm -hmm. amazing. All, all right, right, family. Sweet dreams. Thank you all so much. Sweet dreams. Good night. Become lucid. Boom. Woo. That was like a different world. <laughs> Whoa, I know. Another world. Another world. Yeah. Family, share this video. Send some love. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. See y'all later. Peace.